Meghalaya witnessed one of its worst unrest in recent years, sparked by the encounter of former leader of Hainutrep National Liberation Council, Chalishtafil Thank you. But it also has expositions of support for the militant organization among the public, an alleged violation of human rights by the government. Amid the destruction, discontent among the tribals against the alleged high-handedness of the security forces has reappeared. So how will the Bighalaya government tackle the crisis? This is an inside account of what led to the recent violence in Bighalaya. celebrating the 75th Independence Day, Meghalaya was witnessing one of the worst days of violence since the protest against Citizenship Amendment Act in December 2019. Black flag marches, pelting of stones at police and private vehicles, vandalism of property, all of these incidents took place within a span of few hours. Masked men had snatched weapons from the police and waved them across as they drove across the city. Petrol bombs were also hurled at the chief minister's private residence. The situation led to a curfew of about 60 hours and suspension of mobile internet for over 72 hours in the Shillong agglomeration. The chain of incidents, however, began days before violence in the state escalated. The first incident took place in the wee hours of July 14, when an IED explosion at the Clarihat Police Reserve in East Jantia Hills left a police personnel injured and damaged the boundary wall of the building. The second incident took place at a busy marketplace in Shillong's Laitumkra area on August 10, injuring one. The HNLC claimed responsibility for both attacks within moments of each incident. However, matters escalated after Chiristafield Thank You, a former leader of the militant outfit was killed in an encounter during a raid at the surrendered militant leader's house. Police statements claimed the former militant attacked the police team with a knife as they went to arrest him in connection with the IED bomb blast at 3 a.m. When they entered his house, uh, there was resistance from his side. In the melee, he tried to stab one of the constables. Purely exerting the right of private defence, one round was fired. Chesterfield Thangview was uh, injured in the abdomen. Unfortunately, he succumbed to his injuries when he was taken to the civil hospital. But the people of Meghalaya weren't buying the police's story. Can you pre-plan? Pre-plan. This is pre-plan. They just want to eliminate him. They want to eliminate him. This is pre-plan. Social organizations soon came forward to condemn the police action and call for August 15 to be observed as Black Flag Day. As a whole, we request them to honor him uh, tomorrow, pay his uh, respects by uh, joining us tomorrow as a Black Flag Day. Reports of unrest started coming in from various localities of Meghale by the evening of August 14. In one such incident, a police vehicle was vandalized in Jiao locality in Shillong. The police could not put up a fight 
because they were outnumbered. Helmets and bulletproof vests were seen lying on the streets for hours. The series of events over the past few days has put the Meghalaya government in a spot. It even led the Home Minister, Lakman Rumbui, offering to step down from his position. Meanwhile, crucial concerns are also being raised on the encounter of Cherish the Field Thank you. <laughs> The manner in which he was eliminated, it leaves so many questions unanswered. Even if he is um, connected to the IED blasts, you would want to know how he is doing it, uh, why he is still doing it when he has said that he has surrendered and he, um, according to HNLC, the present uh, General Secretary Sanjkupa Nong Trao, he is supposed to be a sort of an informal interlocutor. So why was he eliminated? Uh, I think that is a question to me that, that needs answers. It is uh, unbelievable, unlikely that uh, if you go into a person's house who is sick, who is unarmed during the dead of night, very in the wee hours, that uh, he will fight back. Apart from that also he has no weapons and the police shot him. So everyone understand that uh, there is a uh, something wrong with the, the encounter so we believe that uh, you see that is more or less like a crime a murder when we look at constitutional law or we look into any of the human right legal framework all over the world uh, arrest can be you know happened uh, with a warrant and if the person re retaliate the police definitely they will have to take cautions and precaution, but this situation is so obvious that the person has been sick for a while, he is in bed. They entered the house at 3 a.m. without a warrant and it was almost shoot at sight. So definitely that is a human right violation. It should, either it's from the state to, a, to an individual or from any underground outfit to the state. So it's, it's more, it's the violence is the same and it is a human right violation. So one has to accept that, that uh, it has gone wrong, uh, it has to be intervened and investigated and I think the Asian Human Rights Commission itself uh, you know, has brought in um, inquiry that will have to take place at this moment uh, to see the violation aspect and how this violation has taken place. Amid the vandalism and chaos, chants of long live HNLC could also be heard, raising speculations over support for the HNLC among the people of Mikhale. This is not done. It means that there were elements of the HNLC perhaps in that procession and it is expected also since he was their leader for so long, almost 30 years, it was expected that some of them would be there uh, and we won't know them even if they are there. And even those guys who uh, sort of uh, went and snatched those weapons from that police outpost, it's not possible for ordinary youth to undertake such an operation. You know, I would call that an operation because you not only snatched the rifles, you took the vehicle, then you drove it around and uh, you brandished those guns. Uh, that to me is a show of complete disrespect to the law and order and even to the to the whole idea of a funeral that was to be held that day that was meant to be a respectful uh, kind of um, you know it, it is a respectful event it wasn't meant to be a show of strength against the state so i i don't think that's a good omen for meghalaya those cries at the funeral were really an outpouring of grief and anger at what had happened, uh, the excesses by the state. And it, at that level, it was a tipping point because there has been growing dissatisfaction and discontentment with this government, you know. Uh, everything seems to be going wrong. Simple things about ensuring entitlements and rights, they are not able to get it. And there's so much uh, corruption, even during 
the pandemic. And so people were expressing their resentment against all of that. And uh, also the fact that the state was using its machinery to silence, you know. And uh, I think that especially with young people, there is this frustration that no matter how hard they work, what they do, they are unable to pull themselves up, to find a job, to start a business, because there seems to be this overarching criminalization of everything. I think it's very, uh, you know, I would say that the chanting, it's actually reminding back. It's an emotional reminder uh, for the people who still believe in the ideologies of HNLC, uh, for the communities who still feel that this, you know, situation that has taken place, it's bringing back the fight of HNLC. So there's a mixed back feeling, you know. So at one end, I'm not saying that the chanting is right. I'm not saying that chanting is the right way to go forward. It needs to be resolved peacefully. But I also have to say that the situation that has taken place has brought mixed feeling. It has brought back emotional, you know, I would say, you know, of the past. Uh, and because a person happens to be, you know, from the outfit who have actually surrendered, is a surrendered person to the state. And I think that is something that the chanting is bringing, you know. So some who still support the movement will chant. The people who don't support the movement will not chant. And the emotion of the fight for the, you know, of what they had, you know, in the past will be the debate that will come along. And I think that is also going to bring a lot of unpeaceful situation in the state. And I think, but the most important part that the state has seen a lot of peaceful, uh, you know, situation over the years. It's time that people who works for development, who works for the state, in terms of the issues of human rights, communities, the wrong Bashna. I think we need to come together to really look at this in a more, more peaceful way. The Hindu Trip National Liberation Council, or HNLC, is a product of a 1992 split in the Hindu Trip Achik Liberation Council, the first militant tribal outfit in Meghalaya. The split took place due to inter tribal antagonisms leading to the formation of the HNLC and the Achik Madhgarek Liberation Army, which is also called AMLA. HNLC represented the Khasi and Jaintia tribes, whereas the AMLA represented the Garos. However, their cause was the same, and that was to get rid of the outsiders, which is locally called Dakars. The HNLC was first proscribed on November 16, 2000, but the ban was later lifted However, it was again banned by the central government on November 18, 2019 due to the outfit's increasing involvement in violent activities. Cherish the field, thank you, was the founding general secretary of HNLC, but in 2018, he decided to come to the mainstream life. Meanwhile, Molai, in the heart of Shillong, became the epicenter of the unrest. Reports of violence also came in from the area a day later when miscreants pelted stones on the convoy of Governor Satyapal Malik. Amid all these allegations against the CRPF, specifically against the temporary camp located at Block 9 of Nongkwar area, were also raised. Locals said the CRPF had raided the locality late on Sunday and vandalized public and private property. กิลากันจัดกินิกเซอร์ปีบังละคังยังนี่กะเกียดดะคิมสเตปกิลวันชันดูร์กิมิเดียละดะกะดินบุตรสุดาอาบากิเกียดมันสเตปละดะกะดินบุตรสุดาบุยะคุนบันรุงสะปอกกันบางาเลกิควรตะกิดนเบยะเยียมดันฮิเวคุนบันเสียดันสะสวะตะละหะก
Piti Sokmi, Congress MLA of Maulai constituency, who later visited the area to take stock of the situation, also condemned the CRPF. It is very uh, unfortunate that it compelled me that I have to con condemn uh, the beha behavior of the CRP. I'm sure that you also have all seen in the spot. But um, uh, actually we thought that, uh, that the police forces, especially CRP, will control the mob and will try to displace the mob mm. and bring down of any of uh, any uh, uh, situation. But it is very unfortunate that they have uh, beating, beating the people. Even they have, we have seen that even they have um, uh, beating them in the, the front glass of the, of the vehicle. Some of the vehicles have been already damaged and many have been damaged. Later, locals of the area, mostly women, came forward to keep night watch. Close to 100 women from Lorenkep, Nonglum, Nongkwar and Umklong localities came together to prevent any untoward incident from taking place. The matter was soon taken up to the Chief Minister and a resolution to shift the camp to a permanent location was taken up by the government. However, the events of August 15 had already put Meghalaya police on the spot, especially after weapons from the police personnel were snatched away. On August 16, Chief Minister Conrad Sangma announced a judicial probe on the encounter of Cherishta Field Thank You and formed a peace committee that will be chaired by Deputy Chief Minister Preston Tingsyong. We briefed the cabinet on the different aspects of the events that took place in the last five days and discussed also about the police operation that took place on 13th early morning. Details were given to the cabinet uh, ministers and the other officials who were there. And uh, based on all those aspects, and also based on suggestions that were given by the cabinet ministers, the cabinet has decided to constitute a judicial inquiry under the Commission of Inquiry Act to look into the events that took place on 13th early morning. Apart from this judicial inquiry, the Cabinet has also agreed and decided to set up a peace committee which will be chaired by the Honourable Deputy Chief Minister, Sri Preston Tinsong. After repeated demands from local administrative heads, activists and social organisations, the Meghalaya government announced that the chairperson of the Meghalaya Human Rights Commission, Justice T. Waifei, will be heading the judicial inquiry. However, the move did not absolve the government of any fault. Questions were yet again raised over the government's move to suspend mobile internet. In all, Meghalaya has had to endure 603 hours of internet suspension since June 2018. Five of the six spells where internet was suspended was after the NPP-led Meghalaya Democratic Alliance government took charge in 2018. Before suspending internet, the government should think also because now almost each and every activity, be it business transaction, education, or for any matters, people use the internet. So internet has become an, a vital part of our lives. It has become an, like an essential commodity in which we carry our day-to-day -day life. So I believe that this uh, tactics of uh, internet suspension or what you call it, internet ban, uh, is not suitable. It's become such an easy alibi. I think people should, should do some more strategic thinking 
to see how they can counter these uh, you know these these uh, sort of eruption of violence at different localities not in the whole city this is not the first time it has happened even uh, two years ago when we had the situation right that took place in the state and it's also being adopted by many states in the northeast as a way to actually um, you know uh, i would say reduce flaring up of any kind of situations uh, i do understand that flaring up can cause more trouble uh, flaring up sharing of information can actually sometimes brings in more violence uh, violence needs to be reduced but this is not a strategy which is right because then it takes back the democracy of a country uh, and our rights you know to use technology uh, and so there has to be other ways of how it should counter the situation and actually it's really an infringement on the rights of people to actually do this especially in a time such as this when there's so much dependence on the internet even you know students lost almost 3 days of school because they were not able to have their classes so um it's sad that this government has been resorting to this quite a lot and i think uh, they should not and uh, we as people should should protest it every time it happens they shouldn't take it for granted you know that it's okay with uh, people that they cut off our uh, internet Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.